Hey everybody, Christian Carver here with Elisa's Drums. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to set up your Elisa Strata Prime Kit for the very first time. Let's get started. Our first order of business is to completely unbox the kit. Take all pieces out of the boxes in which your kit was shipped and remove their packaging. The included box contents sheet can help you confirm that all kit pieces are present. The only tool you'll need that's not included in the box contents is a Phillips head screwdriver. Note that your Strata Prime's parts list does not include a kick pedal, hi-hat stand, or drumsticks, so have yours ready to go before starting the assembly process. Throughout this video, I'll refer to each part of the kit by its name and on screen. I'll also include its assigned letter on the box contents and assembly guide sheets so you can easily follow along. Our next task is to set up the kick drum. Grab the S Spurs, the T Strata kick drum, and your kick pedal, not included. Make sure to only use a kick pedal that has a hard surface beater with your Strata Prime. Beaters made of plastic or wood are ideal. Beaters made of a soft surface like felt cause more friction and can wear down the kick drum's head more quickly. Position the T kick drum so that the side of the Elisa's Drums logo is facing you. Then insert the S Spurs into the mounting brackets. Position the S Spurs so that the kick drum is parallel to the floor. Feel free to adjust the angle of the Spurs depending on how thick the base of your kick pedal is. Once the kick drum is parallel to the floor, tighten the clamps on the Spurs. Now that we know we have all our parts, let's assemble the drum rack, for which you'll need the following. B, C, D, the long, short, and module crossbars. E, F, the inner and outer vertical posts. A, and the drum key. It's a good idea to keep the drum key within arm's reach at all times while assembling the drum rack. You'll be using it frequently. Let's assemble the center part of the drum rack. Grab the E inner vertical posts and the C short crossbar. With the curvature of the C short crossbar bending away from you, attach it to the top of the fixture of each E post, securing the fixture screws with the A drum key. Grab the remaining B long crossbars. Insert each B long crossbar into the fixtures of the E post and secure them by tightening the fixtures head screws using the A drum key. Grab F outer vertical post, place the F vertical post to your left, insert each B long crossbar into the fixtures of the F vertical post. Do the same with the assembled right side of the rack. Once the long crossbars are secured, grab the D module crossbar and attach it to the top of the F vertical post. If the drum rack feels wobbly or unsecured while standing, make sure all of the crossbars are level and parallel to the floor. Now that our rack is assembled, let's attach the clamps to it. Grab all eight of the G clamps. Let's first attach one of them to the D module crossbar. Each clamp has two wing screws and two holes. Loosen the large wing screw next to the Elisis logo to loosen the large hole of the clamp. Then slide it onto the middle of the D module crossbar so that the smaller hole is behind it and facing upward. Next, attach one clamp to the far right side of the top B long crossbar on the left side of the rack. Place this clamp in roughly the same position as the one on the module crossbar. On the center part of the rack, attach two clamps to the C short crossbar so that they're more or less equal distance from each other. Position these clamps so that the smaller hole is facing upward and parallel to the floor. The last four clamps will be attached to the B long crossbar on the right side of the rack. In the left center of the B crossbar, 
attach two clamps right next to each other. The clamp on the left should have its large wing screw on the inside of the crossbar, roughly parallel to the floor, while the clamp to its right should have its smaller hole facing upward and parallel to the floor. Finally, attach the last two clamps to the right center and far right parts of the B crossbar. Put the right center clamp in the same position as the one you just attached to the left. Put the far right clamp in the same position as the leftmost clamp on this crossbar. For the rest of this video, I'll refer to each clamp with a number, 1 through 8, going from left to right on the drum rack. Next, let's insert the HL rods into the clamps so we can mount our tom pads later. Grab the four HL rods. Note that each one has a metal side and a rubber side. On the drum rack, we have our eight G clamps. From left to right, I'm going to number them one through eight. We'll attach the L rods to clamps three, four, six, and seven. Slide the rubber end of the L rod into each of these clamps. With the metal side bending upward, then tighten the small wing screw of each clamp to secure the L rod in place. Things are shaping up. Let's keep things moving by setting up the hi-hat. To do this, you'll need the N hi-hat clutch, the O hi-hat controller, the P 14-inch hi-hat cymbal pad, and your hi-hat stand, not included. On the N hi-hat clutch, remove the bottom nut and one of the two felt pad washers. Insert the bottom of the clutch into the top of the hole of the P hi-hat pad, then slide the removed felt washer onto the bottom of the clutch underneath the pad. Replace the bottom nut on the bottom of the clutch and tighten it so that it's securely holding the pad in place. Just like with the other cymbal pads, don't tighten the top nut too much. You'll want the hi-hat pad to have some give when you hit it. Next, grab the O hi-hat controller and with its piston facing upward, slide it onto your hi-hat stand's upper pull rod. If your hi-hat stand has a felt base on the bottom of the pull rod, you can leave it there. No need to remove it. Slide the assembled hi-hat pad and clutch onto the pull rod. The bottom of the clutch should be touching the top of the controller's piston. Adjust the height of the symbol as desired, then tighten the wing fastener on the top of the clutch to fix it in place. Now it's time to assemble the snare stand and mount the snare pad on it. Grab the U, the snare stand base, V, the snare stand top, and the remaining M, 14 inch drum pad. First, loosen the bottom wing fastener on the U stand base and extend its legs outward. Then re-tighten the fastener. On the V stand top, Loosen the wing fastener and rotate the basket so it's facing upward, then re-tighten the fastener. Insert the V top into the hole of the U base and tighten the top fastener on the base. On the V stand top, loosen the tension knob if necessary and fully extend the basket. Place the M snare pad in the basket, then re-tighten the tension knob to secure it. Our next step is to attach the tom pads to their mounts. Grab the J, the 8-inch pad, K, the 10-inch pad, L, the 12-inch pad, and one of the M14 pads. With each pad's head facing upward, slide them onto their corresponding G clamps, securing them using the fastener on the back. Mount the J 8-inch pad on clamp number three, the K 10 inch pad on clamp number four, the L 12 inch pad on clamp number six, and the M 14 inch pad on clamp number seven. Make sure the sides of each pad aren't in contact with each other or the drum rack. If they are, 
the force that's transferred through the pads and rack while you're playing the kit can result in double triggers, ghost triggers, and miss triggers. Once your pads are mounted, make sure to tighten the heads of the pads. The heads are intentionally left loose for shipping purposes. This is to prevent damage to the heads in case of expansion and contraction due to temperature changes during shipment. Use the drum key to tighten the head screws of each pad. To keep the amount of tension on the head equal, use a diagonal clockwise pattern while tightening the screws, just like you would tightening an acoustic drum kit's heads. Each pad on the Strata Prime kit has six to eight head screws, so use this technique to tighten the heads on each drum pad. Start at the top left screw, using the drum key to tighten it at least half a turn. Then tighten the bottom right screw, since it's located diagonally from the top left screw. Then tighten the top right screw, then the bottom left screw, then the right upper middle screw, then the left lower middle screw, then the right lower middle screw, and finally the left upper middle screw. Our next order of business is to attach the I cymbal mounts. Grab the three I cymbal mounts. For each one, insert the rod with the wing nut on top into the bottom rod with the wing fastener. Insert the bottom rod of each I cymbal mount into clamps two, five, and eight. Then use the wing fastener to position the top rod of each mount at roughly a 130 degree angle. For the cymbal mount inserted in clamp number two, position the top rod so that the wing nut is facing right, while the top rods of the mounts in clamps number five and eight should be facing left. Next, let's get the cymbal pads attached to their mounts. Grab the two Q 16 inch cymbal pads and the R 18 inch cymbal pad. To mount a cymbal pad, remove the wing nut from the top of the I cymbal mount. Each I cymbal mount comes with two felt pad washers. Take one of them and insert it snugly into the hole on the bottom of the cymbal pad, then slide the pad onto the mount. Slide the other felt washer on top of the cymbal, then screw the wing nut on. Don't tighten the wing nut too much. You'll want the cymbal to have some natural give when you hit it. The Q 16-inch cymbal pads go on the left and far right cymbal mounts, while the R 18-inch cymbal pad goes on the center cymbal mount. Next, let's quickly mount the drum module to the rack. You'll need the W prime drum module, the X module mount, all four Y screws, and your Phillips head screwdriver, not included. With the W module laying upside down, align the X module mount with the screw holes on the bottom panel of the module. Then insert one Y screw into each hole and use your Phillips head screwdriver to fix the mount to the module. Simply insert the X module mount into the G clamp on the D module crossbar on the far left side of the drum rack. Then tighten the clamp's wing fastener to secure it. Now that all individual pieces of the drum kit are mounted to the rack, feel free to make small adjustments to the height and positioning of each mounted piece in a way that makes sense for your specific drumming setup. We have just one more thing to do before our kit is fully set up. We need to connect the cable snake to the pads and module. Grab the Z trigger cable snake, the AA power adapter, and the BB cable wraps. Ensure all cables in the cable snake are untangled if necessary. Plug each individual quarter inch cable jack on one end of the Z snake into the corresponding drum trigger inputs on the W drum module. Each cable jack is labeled with the drum or cymbal pad it corresponds to in the kit, so simply match each one with its trigger input. Grab the BB cable wraps and working from left to right, begin running each cable in the snake to its appropriate pad, 
starting with the hi-hat. Use one hand to plug the cable into the pad's quarter-inch jacks, while using your other hand to hold the other cables against the rack. Once you've connected all pads on that side of the rack, use one of the cable wraps to secure the cables to that portion of the rack. Repeat this process, working your way around the kit from left to right, from the P hi-hat to the R 18-inch symbol, until all cables are connected to their corresponding pads and secured to the drum rack with the B B cable wraps. Be sure not to wrap any cables around each other, as this can cause improper drum triggering when playing the kit. Finally, grab the AA power adapter and connect it to the power port on the rear panel of the W module, and connect the other end to a power outlet. Now all that's left to do is power on your module, connect your headphones or speaker, and start playing. For additional resources, tutorials, and technical support, please visit alesis.com slash support. As always, thank you for watching. I'm Christian Carver. I'll see you soon.